Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the 29th day of November 2022. I hope you're safe and healthy today. And I hope your family is safe and healthy today. And that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health, are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are trying to save lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks and parks clean. And those that make deliveries of things like food and water and mail for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women who are out here trying to help rescue and deliver and recover the teenagers and children who are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of prostitution and child prostitution. Pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, sex slavery, and, and double curses on the perpetrators, the perverts, and the profiteers who are out here trafficking in human misery. Finally, lessons upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and mostly children living on the streets of the United States of America. And millions of people around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings. Blessings upon them for theirs is the kingdom. There's scheduled to be a basketball game tonight in Detroit, Michigan. The New York Knicks are going to be playing the Detroit Pistons tonight. Now, for the last few seasons, I'd say pretty much probably like the last two years, I'd say at least two seasons, since Tom Thibodeau has been here probably at least, um, the Knicks have had the Pistons number pretty much. Um, they've been They've had a lot of success against Detroit. Now, part of that is because Detroit, you know, a couple of years ago, really um, been merely starting with before came Cunningham, even with Killian Hayes, they were in rebuild mode. They went into full rebuild mode. They started their rebuild with Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey, you know, they, they um, Isaiah Stewart. They started that, they had a good draft that year. They, they got all of those guys that year. And um, then, of course, after that, they got Kay Cunningham. And then after that, they got Jaden Ivory. And they got Marvin Bagley from the Kings. So they got a nice young core. Um, they added to that, you know, last year was Jeremy Grant. And this year, they had Bodan Bogdanovich uh, adding to that. And, of course, they have other veterans like Corey Joseph uh, that are supplementing the youth. Now, the NBA is not the NC2A. It's not high school. This is the league. And what am I, what do I, what do I mention that for? People, it's, people expect the Knicks to win or expect NBA teams to beat other teams because I don't know. Maybe they just feel like they're just better teams. Any NBA on any given night, any team could beat any team. It's the NBA. Okay. And that's for several reasons. Everybody's talented in the MVP. You cannot, as Tom Tippett always says, you cannot be, and he's right, you cannot be in the league if you're not good at basketball, period. So if you're in the league and you're in a contract, you can play ball, okay? And not only that, the second thing is it's an 82-game season. The only season I think is as long as the NBA, or at least feels that, is, the, is NHL, the hockey. They seem like they're playing forever. But even, and then they, they do a lot of contact, but they're on skates because their feet are not planted. I don't see as many knee injuries with them, but it's also a marathon. But the NBA is definitely a marathon and that wears on even the most talented basketball players. Okay. It's a marathon, which is why you want depth. Okay. As much as possible because everybody's going to get a chance to play because it's a long season. So. But when you get to the playoffs, you can have those expectations because a better team, given seven opportunities to beat a lesser team, you know, the, the percentages are the better team. The high percentages are the better team is going to win because you have now seven games to focus, to make adjustments and for the talent or the superior talent to come out. But during the course of a season, anything could happen. Okay. Now, in college basketball, teams are ranked based on their strength. Okay, so based on the talent level and the strength in their previous record and, and, and the new crop of, of freshmen coming in, you got ranked teams and, and 
So therefore, yes, you could get a game where number one is supposed to be the number 10 seed because that's the ranking. That's the, and, that, and that's different. And there's only 30 games or so in college basketball. The NBA is a different thing. Okay. So, and again, I mentioned, for example, the, you know, the Golden State Warriors beat the Knicks, but a couple of nights later, Detroit or somebody like Detroit beat Golden State and beat them handily. Might have been the Kings. I can't remember, but they beat them like by 30. You know, so it could happen to anybody at any time. Why am I saying all that? Because you don't want to sleep on any team and just expect a win. Now, tonight, for tonight's game, Kay Cunningham is out. Kay Cunningham is out because he has a stress fracture or what they think might be a stress fracture in his shin. And I, from the reports I've been reading, um, they want him to have surgery to fix it. And he's not wanting to have surgery. Kay Cunningham is very... um health conscious. He came into the league, I think, as a vegan. So he's, I don't know if he still is, but he came into the league as a vegan, very health conscious. And so um, I think it sounds like he wants to let this heal on its own if it has a chance to, rather than opt for the surgery. And most players would probably do that these days because of the long-term implications that can affect you later on in life from some surgeries. But he's out. Okay, and they're trying to evaluate what to do. Jaden Ivey is questionable because of his knee. Now, Jaden Ivey's a rookie, um, and you know it's a long season. And again, he this is twenty games in. They not you know college players play thirty games starting in maybe October, November, and they go all till April, and the whole thing is thirty thirty five games. In the NBA, here we are in November, right? And there's already 20 games played. See? So it's a lot more games and a lot more condensed. And so it's not unusual for a rookie. Well, every rookie, well, most rookies do what they call hitting the wall, which means about the time they'd be playing their 35th to 40th game where they wouldn't have actually played that in NC2A, they're going to have a fatigue factor that comes in that they got to fight through in the middle of an NBA season. So here, Ivy's knee is questionable. That's not surprising. He might play. He might not play. Um, Bogdanovich is questionable. They don't say why. They just list him as questionable. Marvin Bagley is day to day, which means he's, uh, they don't have any specific ailment, which means he's probably going to play. Uh, Isaiah Stewart is questionable because of a sore toe and he'll, he'll probably be out. So they're missing a lot of their top guns, but again, you can't sleep on them. They still got Corey Joseph, a long time Nick Killer from going back to Toronto. They got Alec Burks, and we know he's missed the fourth quarter from our own experience. They got Killian Hayes, who's still young. He might not be as good as they wanted him to be, but he's still, he can still play. Sadiq Bey, Isaiah Livers, Jalen Duran, Marvin Bagley. They got enough. Uh, Rodney Magruder, who was also a Nick Killer. Hamil, Hamadou Diallo. They got enough to beat us. Okay. So I expect the Knicks to win because I feel like they're the superior team, but this is the NBA. So the Knicks have to come prepared to play. And so if they come prepared to play tonight, um, this is a game. This is one of them games that can help you get right. Okay. Um, if you, 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 if you, if you need to learn to move the basketball, it'll help you. If you need to learn to switch on defense, rotate, it'll help you because you should be able to do that against this team. Right now, in terms of moving the basketball, I have to say, the Knicks have done a very good job, even in the two losses, of moving the basketball. And the reason I say that is because the last game, I believe they had 30 assists. Let me just go back. But I believe they had 30 assists in their last game. Now, on the Knicks side, um, it's on, the only person at this point in this morning listed on the injury report is Emmanuel Quickly. And, and you know, he's day to day with a sore knee. I expect him to sit. At least I hope that they sit him tonight. And the reason I hope they sit him is because this is the first night of a back to back. They played Detroit in Detroit tonight. They played Milwaukee in the garden tomorrow night. So it's a back to back. So I'm hoping they sit IQ today and let him rest his knee. So the last game they would have played would have been Sunday. So then you had Monday, Tuesday off. And he can rest in the end. Then he only played less than nine minutes on Sunday. So hopefully he's iced it up, you know, rested up, 
and that his knee is feeling better to be ready against Milwaukee tomorrow. So that means I'm hoping, I'm thinking they're going to probably play more deuce tonight. Um, yes, the Knicks had 30 assists against Memphis. And then the game before that, they had 27 assists against Portland. So, I mean, not that they couldn't improve, but that's pretty good numbers. I mean, before the season, my estimation in terms of improvement of ball movement would have been 25 assists or more. So they're doing that. They're getting 27. They're getting 30 assists. The ball's moving. Of course, a lot of that is Jalen Brunson. And of course, some of you are so sensitive about some of your favorite players that the negative mention of any of them causes a stir among some of you, but I don't care. I'm going to tell you what it is. Jalen Brunson is the point guard. He is going to help the Knicks improve, especially we get to playoff time, the Knicks in playoff contention. As we know, this dude could do work in the playoffs as well. But my gripe with him is that he needs to start early getting his team involved. That's my problem. I want to see him let everybody touch the ball. Now, there have been times in the last two games that that has been the case. Everybody's touched the ball. But... I don't feel like he needs to take the shot. Some people say, well, we don't have a closer. No, that's bull crap. Cam could close. And RJ was shooting the ball well in this last game. And he was bully balling Memphis last game. Okay. And so you could get, and RJ has won games for us. I know some of y'all forget that, but he has won games for us in last second shots. Okay. So it's not like he can't do it. And all the hate some of y'all give is ridiculous. But RJ is an option. Cam is an option. Grimes, who he had, who Tibbs had on the floor at times at the end of the game, is an option. You don't have to take it all on yourself. Again, with John Morant, if you really looked at the game, he was allowing his teammates to get involved in a very heavy manner in the first half. He was getting everybody involved. He was moving the ball. He wasn't. It's almost like he was taking his time and not really trying offensively because I knew he was going to come back in the second half and push his will. And that's what he did. He imposed his will at the end, but he had already established his teammates, you know, with, with being as being, uh, as being options, as being threats with the basketball. And that's what I'd like to see a little bit more. They had 32 assists. Okay. And John Moran had 14 of them. And I know he had nine in the first half. That is just the strategy is what I'm saying. And and let me just say this for those of you that are going to be hating because I just mentioned Jalen Brunson and had the nerve to say something negative. But I believe that Brunson's IQ, which is his greatest strength, is going to prevail here. Like he'll, I guess what I'm saying is he's going to figure it out. Okay. He's going to figure it out. It just, it's just annoying when you see a game they might have won. Okay. And that, and I'm a fan. So I'm just like everybody else. So it's annoying when you see a game they might have won. It's not the end of the world, but it's annoying because you said, dad, you know, if he'd have passed that ball to, to maybe Cam or maybe RJ could slice into the hole, might have got a layup, you know, but okay. Is what it is. But overall, I do believe that the IQ of Jalen Brunson will prevail here. He's just too smart. His IQ is too high. And that's what his game is. His footwork, obviously, is elite. I mean, elite of the elite is Jalen Brunson's footwork. You know, like I said, he's in that DeMar DeRozan school of elite footwork. But his IQ is even a stronger trait to me than the footwork. His IQ is off the charts as far as basketball IQ. So that is going to prevail at the end. It's going to prevail. Now, that being the case, the defense. Now, we've been watching the defense, and everybody likes to point fingers at Tom Thibodeau because you can't wait to just crap, you know crap on Tom Thibodeau. He's a good coach. Some of y'all don't know what good coach looks like. Some of y'all really don't because if you actually watched some of the guys we had on the sidelines in the last 10 years, you know what bad coach looks like. Tom Thibodeau ain't that. He ain't fizz goggles. That ain't, this ain't Tibbs. Okay. Does he have his faults? Yes. But some of y'all expecting perfection. Some of y'all act as if you would do a better job coaching than him. That's the thing that kills me. <laughs> a dude that's been coaching in the best league in the world for 20 years, you, you know more than him now. Whatever. But I ignore most of that because I laugh because some of y'all are ridiculous. But anyway, 
Tibbs is going to have this team prepared to play defense. But as we know, the weak links on defense are really three. It's Brunson, it's Randall, and it could be RJ as well. The problem with RJ though, to me, the main problem with RJ is that defensively, he gets frustrated playing with Randall. Him and Randall don't work. Not offensively and not defensively. And, and RJ, I can see him getting very flustered because there are several plays on defense where Randall just doesn't try. Or he decides to be in one spot when he's supposed to be in another spot. And if somebody else would do that, he'd be yelling at him. But he does it a lot. Or he tries to double team when it's not necessary and leave his man wide open. He, it's like defensively, there's no either no effort sometimes and there's no IQ at other times. And it's frustrating. Yeah, I had frustrated for watching. Okay. So RJ would be better defensively to me if Randall wasn't on the floor. In fact, I like I said yesterday, both of them play better when the other one is not on the floor. Randall actually plays better with Mob Deep. And so does RJ. But if you notice, Tibbs plays RJ more with the second unit than he does Randall. He did a little bit more with Randall against Memphis in the second unit, but really he likes to play RJ a lot with Cam, with OB. He likes to play them crap them cast together. And I have no problem with that. And they play good together. So that's an issue. That's going to be an issue. That's one of the reasons I'm thinking they're going to wait till the trade deadline. But if the Knicks are out of playoff contention or doesn't appear to be in playoff contention or anything close to that at the trade deadline, Randall's going to be traded along with Evan Fournier. There's no doubt. And, and maybe quickly too. Quickly is going to be traded, but I just don't want quickly traded in a package, really. I mean, he could be. He's perfect for that because of his salary. But I, I, I'd i like to see it quickly. Well, quickly is going to want to go somewhere where, A, he can start and then get the bag. He's going to, that's going to happen. Okay. Because he should start for some team. He should start. See, some of you don't get that. You, you just looking at it as fans and you want to keep quickly. And I get it. I want to keep him too. But I'm telling y'all, the dude wants to start and he's going to get the opportunity to start on another team. Okay, he's not going to get that opportunity here because Jalen Brunson is the starter, period. And Jalen Brunson's on 26. So he ain't going nowhere. So that's why, you know, quickly, but I I know, I think we could get more, you know, for him because I I really think he's that good and he's going to start and he's going to help another team as a starter. So um, I don't know if that will happen to the trade deadline or not. I don't know. But I feel like if the Knicks are out of it, Randall, and Evan Fournier are main candidates to be traded. If the Knicks are in playoff contention and they, and they look like they're in the thick of it, Randall ain't going nowhere. He's going to stay right here in New York and it's going to be fine for him because we're winning. Fournier is going to be traded anyway because Fournier is not even in the rotation now. He's out of the rotation completely. Some team's going to want that shooting and he's going to play for somebody. See, there's no room for him here. Because you have to play Cam and you have to play Grimes and you have RJ. Because of the youth that you have at the at the wing, there's no room. And I've been saying that from the summer. There's really no room for Fournier. So that's why he's going to go. Okay. Um, but tonight against Detroit, they get a chance to get right. Um, Jalen Brunson is going to be there. He's going to, you know, he's the thing is about another thing about Jalen, aside from the high IQ. And aside from the, you know, par excellence footwork is the guy is one of the toughest dudes that I have seen since the nineties in the Nick uniform. I mean, this guy's a rough neck, man. <laughs> I mean, we've had some rough necks like Robin Lopez, um, you know, Zebo. We've had some rough necks on the team in the past, but at the point guard spot, the last dude that I saw that was as tough as this guy was Charlie Ward. That was the last guy that we had that was absolutely 82 game tough, you know, and Jalen Brunson is, I don't even see him missing more than five games. You know, really, I'd be surprised because maybe from wear and tear of the 82 game season, Tom was sitting soreness or whatever, but um, this cat's tough. man. He really is. He's taken some serious shots earlier, early in this season already. And he bounces back and he's ready. You know, I, I saw the play where he got the thigh contusion and I didn't think he was going to play Sunday. 
And yet there he was getting 30 points on Sunday. So Jalen is tough as nails, man. And that's another thing we're going to be glad we got to be able to count on a guy to give you that 72 games every year is, is really high level. So the kid is tough, the high IQ and the footwork. Now, all of that being said, he's a weakness on defense. He really is, but you, you're going to have to work around him, which is why you need four other dudes that can defend around him, which is why a Randall hurts you because he's inconsistent. Like I said, effort wise, he's low IQ defensively and nobody really could tell him what to do. So he's going to, he's going to continue to hurt the Knicks in this area. Um, you know, and so teams are going to exploit Jay, Jalen Brunson because he's not going to be able to get all the help he needs defensively. I feel like if we can get, I, you know, somebody asked me some good questions, say, well, you know, you favor Cam or, or, or Grimes and I favor Cam, but my, in my heart of hearts, I'd like to see Cam and Grimes start. I'd like to see them both out there, you know, together. And if you got to start RJ, okay, fine. Give me Cam, RJ and Grimes. I'll play Cam at the small ball four. And, and let's run with Mitch Robinson and, J, and JB. I, I would do that. But see, that ain't going to happen, though. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. And then, of course, there's Obi. So I wouldn't mind Obi starting either. See, so that's another reason I'd like to move Randall right now so that we can get these kids developed and get them into winning basketball mode on, as starters. But that's another story. But tonight they're playing Detroit. I'm thinking they, they should be able to win. It's a chance for them to get right. I want, um, IQ to sit tonight, play more deuce. Tomorrow we got Milwaukee. We're going to need all hands on deck to have a chance against the Bucks tomorrow in the garden with Giannis and them playing at a very high level right now. They are, they are 14. Those guys are 14 and five, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they're playing at a very high level. Yes, they're 14 and five. And the only reason they're not in first place is because Boston is playing out of their mind at 17 and four. Both of those teams are rightfully at the top of the East and probably will remain so barring injury. That's how good they are. So, you know, it is what it is. As a matter of fact, Boston has the best record in the NBA right now, followed by Milwaukee. So those, those are really, they're, t- they're playing at a very high level. Giannis is playing at an MVP level, as is Jason Tatum, as is Jalen Brun, uh, J- uh, Jalen Brown. They're playing at a very high level right now. Boston has won four straight. Milwaukee has won two straight. Boston is nine and one in their last 10. So yeah. And the thing is, is that I'm going to tell you something. Again, it's an 82 game season and every team except for maybe the 72-win Bulls team or the 73-win Golden State Warriors team, every team goes through, a, goes through a stretch where they lose a couple of games in a row. Every team does. So I want to see what happens, you know, in game 45, when, you know, when the grind really starts to hit. But right now, Boston is, is top. They tough, man. And Milwaukee has already proven, having won a chip, that this ain't going to phase them this 82 games. So... We'll see what happens. But right now we play Milwaukee tomorrow. So tonight I want to sit RQ. I want to play some deuce, um, you know, get him some minutes. And I think Tom's going to do that. I, I feel like he's going to do that. And then because uh, D Rose is here, but you really are limited what you can do with D Rose. Again, you don't want to push it. Cat's 34 years old. You don't want to push him into playing 25 minutes if you don't have to. Let's see. If you can get Deuce McBride those minutes. And then say, you know, because to me, D. Rose is going to be more valuable if he's on the Knicks. He's going to be more valuable come playoff time. You're going to want a D. Rose in the playoffs. See, so um, I would like to put more emphasis on Deuce today uh, in the second unit, Mob D, rather than D. Rose, and definitely sit quick. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Good thing is, is that Grimes, Cam, Mitchell Robinson, and D Rose, none of them are on the injured list. So that's good news. So that means they're all expected to play tonight. Very good. Okay. And one more thing. I hope Cam starts, but we're going to see. I, I hope it could, it could be either way. It could be Grimes or Cam, but I, I'm hoping Cam starts the game. He finished the game Sunday. I'm hoping he starts. We'll see. Anyway, 
Enjoy the game. Enjoy your Tuesday. Be safe out there. Shalom.